gypsy is technically, I guess, a, a, you know, a chorus member who moves from show to show. But for me, it has come to mean that we are the heart and soul of Broadway. We are the people that we keep it down. We hold it down. The stars come, they go, but uh, it, it, it's, it, it, it's the chorus performers, uh, the ensemble members, uh, and even the principal uh, players who constantly come back, who, who love being um, in a live show. Um, that's what it means to me. You can go and see a show, and let's say that there are three leads in the show, for instance, Evita that I'm doing. You can watch three leads singing on stage all the time, but how long are you going to be able to watch those three people? Is it going to sustain interest for two and a half hours? And it's the chorus people that create the town and create the, the vividness and the color and the excitement that I think that's why people come to watch big Broadway musicals and come to see shows. I sat in once last night and, you know, thought the chorus is all on the side and they're not in their dressing rooms texting on the phone or anything like that. They're there supporting the whole story and it made it completely interesting. Had there been the, just the two leads on stage, it would have been a concert, not necessarily an experience. I am a fanatic about this gypsy thing because I deeply believe you cannot have the kind of understanding you should have for the theater if you don't if you don't go through that rank if you don't go through that line if you don't work with these gypsies these kids that work so hard to try to maybe not get out of the uh, just get out of the chorus if they want I mean I never thought of even getting out of it I just loved being in it you know you 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 learn how to see everything around you you share the stage you understand what the theater is all about it's not just about one person it's about the whole group and when you go through the rank of gypsy it's hard work sometimes you're in the back but in the back is just as good as in the front and the kids today have to know that. Um, they have to be, um, I think, they have to be grateful for being the chorus. I really think you have to go through the chorus first before you can get any place else. I have never felt prouder than the time where uh, the assistant choreographer for Rock of Ages said, break a leg, Gypsy, to me, I thought. It, I mean, it literally, rocked me to my core because of what I came to town to do, I had done. It's like a fa family of, well, another term, another family of gypsies who are always more or less together one way or another, you know, or either working or taking class or auditioning. You're always the same, with the same, a lot of times, the same group of people. Have you ever met an actual gypsy? <laughs> Not that I know of. Well. I have friends who they married from college and they, I, I call them civilians, a completely different background. They're all well educated, but it was a, there's a certain affinity that one feels when people are in the theater or in film. I don't know what it is. It's a little magic, a little understanding. I always watched the Tony Awards like every year and like this at the television set for the big opening number and I was like again oh my god mommy I have to be there so it was always in the back of my head and although I lived like 45 minutes away from Broadway it seemed a lifetime away but because of the way my mother raised us and said that you know you could do anything you want I just knew that that's where I was going, how I was getting there, I didn't know, but I, know I, was, I knew I was getting there, for sure. Once you get a script in your hand, once you get um, a piece of music, um, and you learn to uh, perform a song as an acting piece, rather than just singing the lyrics and learning the music, but once you connect with the material and then you think about communicating it um, to an audience, there was something that was different about that, that I hadn't really experienced before. And then somehow it clicked for me, and I thought, this is really what I want to do. Do you want to be a lead? Do you want to be a star? I want to work. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think that sometime I would, I would love to play a lead and be a star, but the goal for me has never been to be a star. It's just to work in this industry. And I came to New York and was just 
in seventh heaven. As a, as a 17 year old. I was 17 were... years old. And I would not recommend that now. I knew nothing. I was green. So you know, you know when you're, you, you know nothing, you're not afraid of anything. I walked around in the shortest shorts <laughs> that you can imagine, just oblivious to the world. I lived at a, a, a woman's hotel on 57th in Lexington for all women. Little did I know at the time it was the women that were released from Bellevue, actually, were living there. When I came here, I started working right away. So some, I got a reputation um, as I know that I didn't know that I had. So when I met people in New York, I would hear, you know, other performers, they would say, oh, this is Adrian Bailey. Oh, you're Adrian Bailey. And I kept hearing that. And I was like, what does that mean? You know, and they said, you know, and people said, oh, you're the guy coming here taking all the jobs. So it felt, it felt uncomfortable because I was blessed to get all these things, but I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to feel like I was taking something away from someone else's, you know, dashing someone else's dreams. I think people get, but get crazy and, and desperate and, and invest so much in getting that one job. But you have to remember, they want you to do well. The directors and the choreographers start that day saying, I hope I find my leading man and I hope I find my leading lady. And so they want you to do well. They want you to walk in and make their day. They have to go home at the end of the day and sit down to dinner and say, we, we've accomplished what we set out to accomplish today. So yes, yeah, so there's, there's definitely things to be gained, but it, is, it can be nerve wracking, especially um, if it is a role that you think you're really right for and this is an opportunity that you'd really like to pursue. I am proud to say I'm a swing. I'm proud to say I'm chorus. I'm proud to say I'm ensemble. Um, it, it's just different words for the same amount of dedication and hard work. And I remember a friend of mine saying that, you know, sometimes you're playing the lead in a show and sometimes you're in the chorus and you're, you're creating the, the other parts of the story. And he said, you know, sometimes you're a peacock and sometimes you're a feather duster. And you have to be good at both and you have to be okay with both because both of them are important. You just play them at different times in your life. When we hit this economic crisis, for example, and everybody was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? My, I have no job security and I have no stability. I'm like, everyone's living like actors now. You know, that's, we, we live in an age where, you know, yes, you have to think my next job is not guaranteed. There may or may not be, you know, I'm part of a union, so yes, we do have benefits, but there's no, um, you know, those benefits are only present if I'm working. So it's that type of thing that you do have to think about. Uh, business choices and and that there will be highs and lows so you do have to stash money away um, hopefully you're not building up too much debt so as performers uh, we have that ability to live very flexibly well it happened after I finished anything goes at Lincoln Center uh, I had fortunately that lasted two years and uh, uh, I was aware at that time that I was getting beyond the point not of physically but age-wise and look-wise. I was not the type anymore. I mean, after a while, you're not the young-looking dancer type anymore. And occasionally a character show will come along, uh, which is fine, but they weren't happening. They were all looking for young, and the style had changed completely. You know, it got disco and, and rock and all that kind of thing. And I just thought, no, it's not for me anymore. I can't. Uh, I don't know that style, and I don't really think I want to go through the, all the hassle of learning it. So I decided it was time to hang it up. Sometimes it wasn't easy, but I mean, just the uh, physical end of it sometimes was hard to get through, but you fight through it and you do it. And it ends up being rewarding once you, real, once you have done it and done the work to make it work, then you realize how rewarding it is for you and that it does become uh, a very fulfilling, it did for me, experience.